Now in this video, we're going to talk about domain and range, not the definition, more like finding and writing domain and range. And so let's talk about how to express domain and range. And there are two main ways. There's one way that uses set notation and the other way that uses interval notation. Now set notation you've seen before, it's with the curly cube braces and it uses symbols of inequality, less than or equal to, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, not equals, and it also can use the symbols for sets like the all real numbers. And then interval notation is probably going to be new to you, and it uses parentheses, brackets, and these things here, which are the infinity symbols, and they're called lemnus gates. And I'm gonna show you set and interval notation for a bunch of different examples. For our first example, we're going to look at a distinct and finite set of points, all right? Now, what I'm about to show you in terms of how to write the domain and range is going to be the same for tables and mapping diagrams. So they're all gonna look like this. Now, I will say right now, there's no point in using interval notation for this, so you're not even gonna see this. The only thing you can use to give me domain and range for a set of points tables or a mapping diagram is to just write it in set notation and it's very straightforward all you do is for the domain use d colon for domain open up a set of braces and then just insert all of the x values so 5 comma 8 comma 9 now if there were repeated numbers so let's say there was a 5 3 and a 5 2 i'm not going to write the 5 twice i'm only going to write it once so then range, it was going to work the same way, open up my braces, and then just list out the y values, 3, 2, and 6. Same thing in terms of repeats, if there's a number that's repeated in the range, I'm not going to repeat it here. Now sets are unordered, which means it doesn't matter what order you write these numbers in. So I just wrote them in the order in which they were. Sometimes you'll see them listed from least to greatest, but that really, really doesn't matter. Now, sometimes you're going to be asked to find domain and range for equations, and I'm going to tell you right now, if I ask you to find domain and range for an equation, you get out your graphing calculator and you graph that thing. Because the easiest way to figure out domain and range is to look at the graph. Okay, so I graph this equation, and it's a line, and I have to imagine what the graph is going to do forever. So for the domain, that means the x values, I need to think, okay, well, is there an x value I can't use? Meaning in this equation, can I plug something in that's not gonna work? Well, as far as I know, I can multiply any number that exists by three and then subtract four from it. My domain is going to be the set of real numbers. So it's every number in existence is my domain. So then I think about the y values, and I imagine this graph going on forever, and I need to think, well, does it, change direction, does it kind of approach something, or does it go forever positive infinity, negative infinity? And if I imagine this line, well, these lines go on forever. So its range is also all real numbers. Now in terms of interval notation, all real numbers is really easy to write. An interval is basically a chunk of the number line. Okay, so an interval is like a chunk of the number line. And when my domain and range are all reals, I don't just want a chunk of the number line, I want the entire number line. And so if I think about the way a number line looks, off this direction, I go towards infinity. Off this direction, I go towards negative infinity. So all interval notation is, is it shows you what chunk of the number line I want. And if I want the entire number line, here's how you write it. So my domain is all real numbers. That means I go from negative infinity this direction all the way to positive infinity. So this, this means I want the entire number line from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the symbols we use for infinity are parentheses. And this is interval notation for all real numbers. And since my range is also all real numbers, I can just go ahead and write the exact same thing. So this, is interval notation for all real numbers. Now this function is y equals two to the x, which is the one of the parent exponential functions. And I will tell you right now, 
that I can have any exponent I want in the real number line. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. And so that tells me for interval, it's going to be negative infinity to infinity because I can imagine this graph going on forever this way and the graph going on forever that way. Now the range is what's interesting here because when you were graphing these equations for big graphs and for the graphing activities, you should have noticed that as the x values got more and more negative, the y values got closer and closer and closer to zero, never hit zero, but got really, really, really close to zero, which means that I am looking at y values for my range that are strictly greater than zero. I can't get zero, but I'm gonna get really, 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 really close to it. And the way to write that in set notation, and this is very specific, pay attention to the notation. So range for r, open up curly cube braces, and I'm gonna say y, because I'm talking about range, not x, y. And then I'm gonna put a bar, and then I'm gonna write the inequality that applies. So y is greater than zero. So set notation of the range is, is y bar y greater than zero. And that bar stands for the words such that. So this means that the range are the y's such that y is greater than zero. And that is set notation for my range. Now interval notation, remember, is a way to write a part of the number line. If I look at the inequality, y is greater than zero, here's zero, what I have a picture of is the, this part of the number line here. Starting at zero, not including zero, and going to infinity. So when you see that open dot, that means it is not included. right? So that means it starts there, but I don't want to count that. So those are the strictly greater than and strictly less than. Now interval notation, remember, is a chunk of the number line. So the chunk of the number line I want is a chunk that starts at zero and goes to infinity. And here's how you write interval notation. It always goes from left to right. So I want the chunk of the number line that starts at zero and then goes to infinity. Now remember, infinities always have parentheses. Now the zero is also going to have a parenthesis because in interval notation, parentheses mean not included, okay? So this is the range in interval notation. So sometimes interval notation is actually easier to write than set notation, which is why we like it. So now I have this function here, which is a quadratic. And I'm going to tell you right now that every single quadratic function has a domain that is all real numbers. And so the domain's interval notation is negative infinity to infinity. Now the range is what's interesting here because it has an absolute minimum value, and the absolute minimum value is the y value that matches it, which is three. So that means that my range is y is greater than or equal to three because it includes that number. It actually goes down to the y value of three, which is why it's greater than or equal to. Now if I flipped my parabola upside down, it would have an absolute maximum value which means my range would be y is less than or equal to. Writing this in set notation, y such that y is greater than or equal to three. And then I have it in set notation. Now interval notation, remember, is a piece of the number line. And so the piece I want starts at three. It includes three, so I have a filled in dot. Means inclusive, that means I want three, and it goes towards infinity. So when I write this in interval notation, I start at three and I go towards infinity. Remember infinity gets parentheses, but now since I want to include the three, I'm not gonna use parentheses, I'm going to use a bracket. So the bracket means included. Finally, let's look at the domain and ranges of pieces of graphs. So they don't have arrows that go towards infinity, they have a distinct start and stop point. And for this one, I'm going to start off with set notation. I'm gonna look at domain. And if I look at where the x values go, the x values go from negative four to five. So I'm gonna go ahead and write negative four x and five. And I need to put some symbols in there to make sure that this all works. And negative four is between, or sorry, x is between negative four and five. And the way to write that is to use less than and less than. 
but since they're filled in, means they're inclusive, so that means it's less than or equal to and less than or equal to. So this tells me that the domain ranges from negative four to five and x is between there. I can do the same thing for the y values. This time, the y values have a lower end of three, higher end of 10, and the y values are in between. And since they are closed dots there on the end, on three and 10, it's gonna be less than or equal to and less than or equal to. And so that's my domain and range in set notation. Now, interval notation is a lot easier for this. I don't need to remember, you know, the, the bar and all that stuff. I just have to do lowest number, highest number, negative four to five, included, bracket, bracket. Range works the same way. Lowest number three, highest number 10, inclusive, bracket, bracket. Now finally, we're gonna look at a fancy graph. This is kind of like a piece of a parabola. And the domain and range work the same way. I need to do low value to high value, right? It's gonna go, the x's for the domain are gonna go from negative four to four. And now I have to be super careful to think if they are inclusive or exclusive. So negative four, has an open dot associated with it, which means I do not want negative four. So then I have to do strictly less than because it's open. And then I go up to four and I look at four. I have an open dot at four. So that means strictly less than also. And then range, I have to think about the Y value. So I'm going from top to bottom or bottom to top. I go from negative three on the bottom to three at the top. Now here's why this is tricky. You just can't go endpoint to endpoint because in between the endpoint, there is a point that is higher up. So the highest actual point of the graph is here at three, not there, okay? So it goes from negative three to three. And now I have to think, well, is it inclusive or exclusive? So at negative three, I scooch down and I go across and I look at the point associated with the Y value that's negative three and it's open, which means strictly less than. And then I go up to positive three, and I look and see about the point associated with positive three, and that is inclusive. I wanna go up to positive three. So that means it's less than or equal to. Doing this in interval notation, these numbers carry over, negative four and four, comma in between this time, and then I use the symbols of less than and less than, tell me, parentheses, parentheses. And then for the range, negative three to three, and strictly less than parentheses, or equal to bracket. Now, you are going to get tons of practice in class on this stuff. All different kinds of graphs, tables, equations. By the end of the class period, you are going to be a master of domain and range.